five, four, three, two. Engine ignition and liftoff of the Atlas V rocket carrying the Mars Reconnaissance. On August 12, 2005, the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter launched into space on a mission to change humanity's understanding of Mars forever. Among several other instruments on board was the High Resolution Imaging Science Experiment, otherwise known as HiRISE. Since arriving at Mars in 2006, HiRISE has been taking images of the planet's surface at a resolution of up to 30 centimeters per pixel. To put that in perspective, the high-resolution stereo camera on ESA's Mars Express mission has a maximum resolution of only 2.3 meters per pixel. That means HiRISE can give us incredible images of the surface of Mars, like these. But it took a lot of careful planning to produce such a high-quality image. This is the fastest we've ever had to process data. We're zooming over the surface at 3.4 kilometers per second, acquiring data at a one ten thousandth of a second. And then we actually image each patch of ground 128 times and sum up the signal in order to get enough of a good signal to noise ratio when it's such a short exposure time. With high-rise images, we study everything we can study on the surface of Mars, basically. We study the ancient bedrock and correlate it with the other data sets to understand how the mineralogy and the environment environment changed over time, understand the stratigraphy, there is rhythmic layering that happened at Mars. Hi-Rise has been responsible for a lot of great discoveries. We imaged avalanches as they were falling down these steep scarps in the northern polar region, and that was a total accidental discovery. I was looking at the test images, and there was an avalanche of material falling down this cliff and a big puff of gas and dust. It turns out it was a rock fall that we had caught right at the exact right moment. HiRISE has shown us that Mars is an active place, with avalanches, dust devils, and new impact craters being spotted all over the planet. Craters are especially important to astronomers looking for answers about the activity on the surface. Craters are really interesting for a number of reasons. Um, one of them is because they give us the ability to figure out how old a surface is. On Mars, we could look at um, different lava planes, for example, and compare how many craters are on that to um, something across the planet and tell which one is older or younger. They have even revealed information about what's under the surface. Some of them exposed shallow, clean ice, water ice. We also get a lot of suggestions for landing sites. Once Phoenix actually picked a landing site and got to Mars, we did the first imaging of one spacecraft from another spacecraft. Every mission has landed on Mars since Phoenix has used high-rise data to find the landing site. High-rise also engages in educational and public outreach in, in a variety of ways. Uh, we have a website with captioned images that we write for the general public. There's uh, something like a couple of thousand of them now. And some of the most interesting public outreach products have been produced by enthusiastic amateurs who take in particular our digital train models and use that to make movies as if you're flying over Mars. And those are some, some really exciting products that, that are all out there on the web for everyone. So anyone can enter a target for a high rise using our website, it's called High Wish. And you can put in your target and tell us why you wanna take it. Actually, a lot of our scientific colleagues do the same thing. We have students doing it, we have members of the public. James Sikoski, a retired school teacher, <laughs> has requested something like a quarter of the public uh, suggestions. He just, he is very systematic and dedicated. And he has requested a huge number of images and we've taken a huge number of those images. MRO's original mission was only scheduled to last four years, but HiRISE and the other instruments are still collecting data after 12 years of Martian orbit, and astronomers aren't ready to retire it yet. Recently, we've been working on a plan to conserve resources of various sorts, including fuel, with battery lifetime, which degrades over time, uh, to last for another 10 years. So that's, uh, that's good to have a plan. That doesn't guarantee success, but that's the hope. So long live HiRISE and may it continue teaching us about our planetary neighbor for many years to come. Hi everyone, I'm Matthew. And I'm Melissa. I'm Victoria. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe so you can keep an eye out for the announcement for next week's live session where we'll talk about the making of the video. We'll be answering your questions live, and also if you have any questions now, you can leave them in the comments down below.